against it, we started up a brand new series in Tyler, The Importance of Renewing of Your Mind. How, how many know that as believers, we need our mind renewed? Uh, there is an assumption, and the assumption is the moment you get born again, your mind is automatically renewed. But that is incorrect. Your mind is not automatically renewed the moment you get born again. The mind renewal is an ongoing process. Your spirit is born again, but your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion is being saved daily. And here's the, here's the danger or the harm of thinking that your mind is already renewed, you start believing stuff that's not altogether true. Because the reality is, watch this, some of our thinking is wrong about life. A lot of time, we are our worst critic. We begin to talk ourselves out of what God has made available for us. Is that me? Amen. Uh, so, is that me? Amen. Give me a, give me a mic, please. Amen. So, we talk ourselves out of what God has made available for us. So today, I want to teach on this subject, part two of our series is the lie we think about ourselves. I want to talk about the lie we think about ourselves because a lot of us are buying in or becoming friends with lies that the enemy says about us and said to us. For instance, the devil will tell you nobody loves you. God doesn't care about you. And if you're not careful, you will buy that lie. You will buy that, and now it gives you a wrong outcome. So this morning, I, I want to talk about the lies we think, amen, about ourselves. And here's the other thing. The other thing is, uh, stand up for a moment, uh, uh, Judge and Ella Peoples. Y'all start up a conversation over there. How many of you all have been around somebody and they're conversating, and all of a sudden, you assume they are talking about you? And before you know it, you feel like somebody is talking about you when they, don't e they are not even mentioned in your name. We, we buy into that, and now we develop a grudge against somebody that is not even thinking or talking about you. Thank you all. So we have to not buy into it because watch this, watch this. You are not who other people say you are. You are who God says you are. And you've got to know too many of us have allowed other people to define us instead of letting God's word define us. And we began to develop low self-image, low self-esteem, uh, inadequacy, because we buy into lies and deception about ourselves that God have never said about us or no one else have said but you begin to think that about yourself. Because watch this, watch this. You've got to stop befriending thoughts that don't line up with God's word. Do you not know when you hold on to a negative thought about yourself, you have befriended that thought, and now that thought is impacting your life because you won't cast it down. You won't rid yourself of it. You entertain it, and now it has imprisoned you. 
Watch this. Write this down. A lie believed as true will affect your life as if it was true. I'm going to say that again. A lie believed as true will affect your life as if it were true. In other words, you bought into a lie and you believe that it's true, now it start impacting and affecting your life and it's not even true. But you bought into it and now your life is impacted by that lie because you got to realize that St. John, the 8th chapter and verse 44, it says the devil is the father of all lies. In other words, he specialized in lying to you, amen, through you. Somebody missed that. He'll lie to you, through you, and you'll believe it. And what we've got to do is we've got to learn to examine every thought. You don't let thoughts linger because if they linger, you entertain them, they start impacting your life. Now, again, here's the principle. Here's the principle. A lie believed as true will affect your life as if it were true. In other words, something is affecting your life, and it's not even true, but you bought into it. I share it with my wife, and I share it with the congregation this morning. In 97, y'all have heard my testimony, I went to the dentist in 97, and my blood pressure shot sky high, 217 over 117. And they said I was having a heart attack, and I wound up being hospitalized that whole weekend. And I've noticed, God showed me, Dr. Johnson, Friday, Thursday, I had a major dental surgery. Now, I walk all the time. My blood pressure was 106 over 69 before I went to the dentist. I got to the dentist, my blood pressure was one, I think it was like 140 something over 101. And what God showed me is I bought into that lie some years ago. So now every time I go to the dentist, I have a relapse of what happened in 97 because I never dealt with it. Too many of us have had things in our lives in time past that was very tragic and very devastating and we never dealt with it and now it comes back, amen, and it tries to imprisonate you because this is, this is what you don't believe. Your mind has two components. There's, there's your conscious mind, but there's your subconscious mind. Watch this. Your subconscious act like the cruise control on your car. If you set that cruise control and you're running to Atlanta and all of a sudden a car passed by you running 90 miles per hour and you set your cruise control at 70, and you accelerate, you're going you're gonna to speed up. But if you don't touch the brakes and let out the gas, your, your car going to go back to 70 because you never changed the set point. A lot of us don't realize that there are set points in your mind that if you don't change it, it'll go back to the last bad experience. Are y'all are y'all hearing this? Amen. See, see, watch this, watch this. See, the truth, that ain't the point I want to bring out. Amen. The way we think about ourselves and how we see ourselves is vital to the success and failure of our lives. Now, I know you don't believe that, but I'm going to prove it. The Bible says in Joshua 1 and 8, it says this book of the law, shall not depart from before 
from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night that you may observe to do all that is written therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. God says that if you've got wrong thoughts of yourself, you won't experience the success that he has for you. And you've got to change it. So watch this. How I think about myself, how I see myself is vital to my success or failure. Could it be that some of our failures is not that God has predestined us for failure, but it's thoughts that we have bought into about failure and defeat that's now still keeping us in failure and defeat because we haven't dealt with it. You've got to check every thought that come to your mind. You cannot let it just hang out there and think that it's innocent, that it doesn't have impact. It does have impact. Watch this. Eve, Eve bought into a lie. I said, in Genesis, Eve bought into a lie. And she convinced her husband to buy into the lie. The devil's greatest tool is lying and deception. He wants to deceive us. And he deceived her. And she bought into something that God never intended for her to buy into. Are we buying into stuff that God never intended for you to buy into? See, when you get born again, you're saved. Our hearts are renewed, but our minds are not renewed. It takes time for our minds to be built healthy. I said, the moment you get born again, your mind is not automatically healthy. It takes time. In other words, you've got to Take your mind through a renewal process. Now, I can't use this analogy here, but our West Campus, everybody remember, at our West Campus, it used to be a liquor store. It used to be a barber shop. It used to be a consignment shop. It was several businesses over there. When we bought that building, I mean, start leasing that building, the first thing that we had to do before we could use it was what? Renovate it. So to renovate something, you've got to first tear some stuff out. We don't realize we've got to tear some stuff out of our mind. We've got to pull stuff down. Amen. As you take and you renovate, you can rebuild. But a lot of us are trying to rebuild without renovating, and therefore, we're getting wrong results. Check this out. A baby that has poop in his diaper, you don't just put a clean diaper over a poop diaper. You're going to have that order coming out. You've got to pull that old pampered off. You've got to wipe that baby down real good. And then you take powders, if they still use powder, I, I, I'm out of touch with that. Uh, uh, you, uh, Doc, is that still the case? Uh, okay, it's not the case, she said. Uh, but anyway, you, you, here's my analogy. You don't put a clean diaper over a poop diaper. A lot of us are trying to put a clean diaper over a poop diaper, and we're getting wrong results. Does that make sense? So, so watch this. A lie, write this down, a lie will keep you living in shame, guilt, condemnation from the path and keep you from living with joy and freedom. A lot of Christians today are living in shame, guilt, 
condemnation from the path. Instead of living with joy, peace, and freedom. Because we are buying into the lie. You're going to die. That sickness is under death. You're going to be broke. Your marriage ain't going to last. You're going to fail. You're not going to get the job. Your, your marriage is going to fail. Uh, you're nobody. Uh, you, you're going to be pregnant before you're 19. You're gonna, in other words, we start buying in to lies and deception, and now it put us in prison. Malicious, we had this conversation, but do y'all realize that there are some inmates in confinement institution that's more freer than people sitting in this church? I know you don't want to clap or agree with it because you think real freedom is not being behind bars. Real freedom is being free within your soul. And there's a lot of us that's not free in our soul because we are being tortured and tormented. We are doing stuff trying to satisfy people instead of living free. Do y'all realize that the makeup industry uh, uh, the beauty salon, uh, the hair, the extra hair, and all of that industry is a billion dollar industry. <laughs> Cut my hair, grow my hair. Cut my hair, wrap my hair. <laughs> and I'm not picking, but watch this. Learn to appreciate who God says you are, instead of letting stop people define you. Don't buy into the lie. Maybe if I get a new car, somebody like me. Maybe if I get another house, somebody like me. Maybe if I, you, if you don't like you, nobody else is going to like you. Write this down. You have a choice what you believe as a Christian. Satan lies to you or God truth about you. You have a choice as a Christian whether you believe Satan lies to you or God's truth about you. I choose to believe God's truth about me not what Satan say about me. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to get into the scriptures in a moment, but I'm trying to get you somewhere right now. Because you got born again yesterday, but today you're still thinking like you did before you got born again. Because your mind have not been renewed. We've, we've got to make an investment in the renewal of our mind. Because renewing of your mind is taking your thoughts and your ideas and you exchanging them for God's thoughts and God's ideas about you. In other words, I'm no longer agreeing with what I think about who I am over what God says about me. Because I've got to come in agreement with what God says about me. If God said I'm healed, then I'm healed. If God said I am fearfully and wonderfully made, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If God says I'm blessed, I'm blessed. If God says I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous. Whatever God says, I change it. I change it. That's why Paul says to the church of Ephesus, he says, through or by the washing of the water, your mind will be renewed. He says, through or by the washing of the water of the word. God's word act like, watch this, water that cleanses us, that 
refreshes us. You know, orange juice. How many know that you take a glass of orange juice, especially if it's high in pulse, and uh, you don't drink that glass completely dry, that pulse dries on the walls, that glass. Anybody seen that? Take that same glass and put it up on a, a faucet. Turn your water on. Leave it there. What happens? It start diluting that pulse, and it start flushing it up out of the glass. God's word will flush every impuritiness, every thought that come to your mind that's not of God. It'll flush it out. But you got to continue to pull God's word on the inside of you. Come on, somebody. See, a lot of us, we're born again, we'll say, but yet we have the same mindset because we haven't renewed our mind and we find ourselves slipping back in the stuff that we did before we got born again. You know why? Again, your mind have not been renewed. So it's easy to go back because the Bible says Satan blind the mind of believers. See, if I can blind your mind, I can blind your life. You don't realize, a lot of us don't realize our minds are blinded. Now your life is out of character with God. And this is why you've got to get your mind renewed. Uh, everybody seeing? Now, let me get into my foundational verse. All that was just introduction. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And listen what Paul says. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Paul says, though we occupy and live here in the earth, we don't wage war. We don't engage in warfare like the world does. Everybody see it? Verse number four, he goes on to say, for the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. Everybody look up here for a moment. not boasting, but I did 23 years in the Army. I've been out now 26 years. And uh, I had the privilege of becoming a first sergeant. And the United States Army sent me to Fort Bliss, Texas for first sergeant course. And there I learned battle, battle strategies, schemes for warfare. During that First Sergeant course, I learned all of the weaponry that we have in our arts in our arts. I knew the equipment, the weapons that the military had. And watch this. It was for the purpose that if we went to war, me as a first sergeant, I knew what was available. It's sad, but Christians, we don't know what our arsenal is. The Bible says for the weapons we fight with. Do you not know you have weapons? Let me give you about five weapons that you have. Number one, your first weapon is the Word of God. The Word of God is a weapon. Anytime your mind come up on attack, you need to use the Word to pull it down. You need to use the Word to pull down stuff out of your mind. Number two, amen, praise is a weapon. David says that in Psalms 8 and in Psalms 9, that praise is a weapon that's at our disposal. And then we know that the name of Jesus, amen, is a weapon at our disposal. Also, we know that in Revelation, the 12th chapter, the Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their what? Testimony. So your testimony is a weapon. And number five, prayer is a weapon. Amen. Prayer is a weapon at the disposal of every believer. 
So you, it's not that you don't have weapons. We just don't access the weapons that are at our disposal. Now, let's go back to the Scripture. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Now, back to the Scripture. Amen. He says in verse number 4, uh, that's 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse number 4. Can we pull that back up in the back, please? Amen. And it says, for the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrast, they have, or we have what? Divine power to demolish what? Demolish stronghold. Now, what is a stronghold? Now, in the Greek, this word stronghold is aroma. Aroma. Amen. Aroma. A stronghold, first of all, is a prison of lies. A stronghold is a prison of lies. That's why you can be in prison in your own mind because you have bought into lies. You have bought into the fact that something has been said to you that's not true, but you have made it true, and now it's impacting your life because you bought into it. So watch this. Strong hopes, amen, are prison of lies. And watch this. Remember, Jesus came to free us mentally from the strong hope, from thought patterns, from mental hindrance that keep us locked up in negative belief defeating behavior. Notice what I say. Strongholds are thought what? Patterns. Thought patterns. Think about your thought a lot of times. What brings you to a place where you don't like? I submit to you, it's your thought that ushers you into a place, if you're not careful, that you don't like, and now you become a prisoner in that place. Are y'all seeing this? Now, I'm not trying to make you believe it. It is true. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, and I don't have time to go, I can reference the scripture, but when God came down to check on the people, he found that their every thought and imagination was what? Evil, and God com confused their language. Notice what God observed. He observed their thought. God is always looking at your thought because your thinking and your thought has great impact. And a lot of us have bought into lies. And this is why we've got to get back to the Word and not let it, amen, mess us up. Write this down. Stop thinking the way you thought before you got born again. Stop thinking about yourself the way you thought before you got born again. You're not that person anymore. Amen. Now watch this. Watch this. Come here, uh, son. Come here, both y'all. Uh, come here, darling. I need you to hold the mic up close by me since I don't have. Pull up the next part of the scripture. Come on up close. Listen what it says. It says, listen, we demolish every what? Look up here for a moment. This is an argument. This is an imagination. An argument that you're having within yourself. The King James says it. How does it say it, Sister Deborah? We cast, we cast down imagination. The NIV says argument. Look up here for it. Folks, whatever imagination and evil argument you got going on, if you don't cast it down, it's going to bring you in prison. But he says we demolish every argument, every imagination, and every what? Pretension. So there's two things working against you. 
If you don't deal with them, they will bring you in prison. You're saved. You're saved, but you're imprisoned by imagination and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. See, some of you, thank you, baby. Some of you, uh, stay right there. Some of you, you be me for a moment, baby. Come here. Some of you make light of those things in your life. You'll say, it don't matter. I can continue to think this way. It don't matter. You don't think it matter, but it's mattering. And you'll wake up one day, and you're somewhere in your thought process that you never intended to be because you never dealt with it. You let it linger. You want to kill somebody now. You want to cut somebody right now. And yet, judge going to have to lock you up. You want to... You, you, you want to do some things. Folks, I'm not telling you what somebody told me. Some years ago, before I got born again, I wanted to kill somebody. And, and watch this. If I wouldn't have dealt with that thought, I wouldn't be standing up here preaching today. Because I had my shotgun probably from here to my knees pointed at that person and all I had to do, but something wouldn't let me pull the trigger. God was with me. That's why you don't let stuff linger. You don't let those thoughts and those imagination linger. Because if you don't deal with them, you will carry out that course of action. So he says, listen what he says, we demolish argument and every pretension that set itself up against. Because what it does, here, watch this, turn and speak. No, 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 no. Speak to it. See, this, this high thought, those thoughts start speaking to you. They start talking to you. And if you don't deal with them, they'll dominate you. They'll have in conversation with you. And you're a prisoner within yourself. In other words, you don't, you can't fight it just with positive thinking. You got to use the word of God. You got to know what the word says. And you got to stand on the word, amen, until that thing flee. The Bible said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw not to God and he'll draw not to you. Thank you all. Here we go. Here we go. Write this down. Our minds is renewed when we are in close proximity with God. Write that down. Your mind is renewed when you are in close proximity with God. Elijah in 1 King, the 18th chapter, experienced a great victory over all the prophets of Baal. Chapter 19, Jezebel sent a messenger, say, see if not this time by the morrow, I'll do you as one of the prophets. Y'all don't see this, but Elijah got into a spirit of depression and he wanted to commit suicide. He wanted to take his own life. See, that's why you can't deal with stuff like that. You can be here today. And if you're not constantly renewing your mind, you'll be here tomorrow. And you're a Christian. This is why you've got to Cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. and Bring it into captivity. Why, why we got to be in close proximity, close proximity with God? Let me tell you why. The voice of the world is real loud. But Elijah sought God. He wasn't in the earthquake. 
He wasn't in the fire, but it was in the still, small voice. God is saying, you'll hear from me when you get still with me and get quiet. Get out of those noisy situations. See, Romans 12 and 2 says, and do not become conformed to the pattern of this world. Why did Paul say that? That's our natural tendency. Dr. Thomas, the other morning when I was putting my notes together, I, I couldn't spell that word. I called my daughter. Called my, I said, I'm, I'm talking about tendency. They said, Dad, I know what you're talking about. This is how you spell it. See, we have a natural tendency to want to conform to this world. But Paul says, do not gig, become conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of our mind. Guess what, Dr. Johnson? There can never be a transformation without renewing of our mind. You may want to do that. You may want to be here. But if you don't renew your mind, you'll never get there. By show of hand, how many of us done said for years, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. You know, you know I'm in the process of doing this. Ten years done gone by. You know I'm in the process of doing this. You may want to do it, but until you renew your mind and begin to let correspondent action, you're just always wanting to be or wanting to do. Renewing of the mind is not just learning. It's changing. It's changing. Look at somebody and say, renewing of the mind is supposed to bring about change. I got so much and so little time to get there. Now, notice what he says here. He says, then you will be able to test and approve what God will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Look up here for a moment. God doesn't have three wills. You know what he's saying there? God's will is progressive. It starts out by being what? Talk to me. Good. It becomes pleasing. And then eventually, perfect. But you know what? It don't happen without the renewing of the mind. You'll never tap into God's good, perfect, and pleasing will until you renew your mind. I'm going to tell you how to do that here in a second. Amen. So, God's will is progressive. Remember, as I began to take you through five, I'm about to give you five ways to move from lies to truth. Remember that deception and lies start with conversation. You got to be careful who you're conversating with. What you're conversating with. Everybody see it? The Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23, I want everybody to see this. Everybody read this with me. Carefully guard, everybody read it. Carefully guard your thought because they are the source of true life. Your life always moves in the, in the direction of your most dominant thought. Whatever your dominant thoughts are, your life is moving in that direction. So who become the gatekeeper to your thought life? 
Not God. You. You have to guard your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth gate. That's why you can't let anything come out of your mouth. That's why you can't let anything come in your eyes. That's why you can't let anything get in your ears. Because they are gateways into your soul. And whatever get there have impact on your life. Whatever get there have impact on your life. Now, here's the question, and I'm going to give you the conclusion. How do you move from lies that you have thought about yourself to God's way of thinking about yourself? Number one, know your thoughts control your life. Your thoughts control your life. That's why you can't just think any thought. You've got to know that your thoughts control your life. Proverbs 23 and 7 said, For as a man, what? Think is in his heart, so is he. Write this down. Don't become friends with negative thoughts, you think. Don't become friends with negative thought, you think. Don't become friends with negative thoughts, you think. Because you got to remember the mind is the battleground in which wars are won or lost. So don't become friend. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 22 and 23. He says, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my what? Hold it, y'all. Waging war against the law of my what? And making me a what? Didn't I tell y'all earlier you become a prisoner? You don't deal. With that thing that's coming against your mind, you become a prisoner in your own life. He says, making me a prisoner of the law of what? Sin, that's what? At work within me. Paul was very strong and focused, but he admitted that he had war going on. Stop pretending like you don't have stuff going on. Be honest with yourself and cast those thoughts down because number one, your thoughts control your life. Number two, our thoughts can be reset by the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Do you not know you can reset your thought life? When your thought life is out of character, you can reset it. Let me show it to you. Look at Romans 8, 5, and 6. Listen what it says. Everybody look at this scripture. It says, those who live according to the flesh have what? Their mind what? Set on the flesh desire. The reason you're doing what you're doing is your mind has been set. So what we need to do is what? Reset our mind. Listen, he tells us, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have what? Have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. So look at somebody that said, reset your mind. Reset your mind. Push the reset button. Push the reset. You getting ready to say something out of character because it's a thought? Push the reset button. Getting ready to make a decision that's out of character? Push the reset button. Reset it. Reset. Everybody see it? Amen. I said it early, but let me give it to you again. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest 
thought. That's the direction your life is moving in. Amen. Now, number three. Number three. I must feed my mind on truth daily. I must feed my mind on truth daily. I know it. I, th I know we think we can go all week long, come to church on Sunday, and that's going to be sufficient. But I submit to you, we are a word of faith church. We believe that the word of God can change your life. Let's look at Psalms 1. Look at Psalms 1. Everybody look here at Psalms 1. Amen. I'm almost finished. It says, uh, not from that translation, but let me look at it from, amen. I want to look at it from the uh, New Living Translation. It says, all the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners, or join with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it, how often? They are like a what? Tree planted along the river bank that bears fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. So we must feed on the Word of God. Jesus said in St. John, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Number four, number four, I must take thought, I must take my thought, capture it. I must capture thoughts that come in my mind that's not of God. I've got to take them, capture it. I can't walk around saying life is never going to be better. I can't walk around saying God don't love me. I can't walk around saying that my mama, my daddy was nothing, so I'm not going to be nothing. I can't walk around thinking that way. I've got to take every thought, capture it, and bring it into the obedience of Christ. And here's the last point is you must remember how amazing God's will is in your life. Now, I want you to see this scripture as we close. Pull up Philippians and watch what it says. Philippians, the fourth chapter from the NIV, verse 8 and 9. I want everybody to read this with me slowly. Everybody, come on, stand on your feet because I'm, I'm closed. But I want you to capture what he says. Listen what he says. Everybody together. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, holy, all right, now, notice what he says, now and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. That's the New Living Translation. One final thing. He gives us one final thing. The first thing he says here is fix your thought. I want everybody to take a finger and point it at yourself like that. Say, I need, I need to, fix to fix my thought. My See, watch this. Stop. Trying to get everybody else's thought life fixed. Point, come on, put your finger at yourself. Say, I can't, I can't say, I can't fix my husband thought life. I can't fix my wife thought life. I can't fix my children thought life. I can't fix my co-worker thought life. But I can fix my thought life. Listen to what he says here, and I'm reading from my translation. He says, fix your thought on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovable, what is admirable. Then he says, think about, watch this, this translation says, then think about the way you think. See, once you fix your thought, 
you need to always think about the way you are thinking. When your thinking get out of character, you need to check it. And say, that's not God's thought. So I close with this thought. Stop believing the lies that the enemy has spoken over your life. Stop believing the lies that the enemy has spoken over your life and think the way God think about you. All heads are bowed.